Karen, do you want to read that question there, and then let's see who wants to jump in and, and have some thoughts about There are sections that are longer than that, but this is just sort of setting up you know, I'll read it. <laughs> what options for curriculum, classroom practice, and instructional materials can best prepare our students? What should curriculum be? I th so I think it's just about basic definitions here, is that right? Which I think are kind of important. But And also maybe, what does it mean to prepare our students? I know Sue and I and other people have had a lot of conversation about, you know, what is the purpose of school? And I think until you hone in on that, it's hard to talk about curriculum. So, who wants to say something? <laughs> I, I will. I, I'll chime in. Um, I think it's um, one of the aspects of even answering the question is that the answer is very situational. Um, and by that I mean depending on the system in which you work, the school district, you have to think about the people who are responsible for delivering the curriculum and oftentimes their comfort level with what curriculum needs to be really impacts what curriculum ends up having to be. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but I, mean, I think I have this ideal vision of what curriculum and classroom practice should be based on what students truly need to learn but then you have the people who work within the system who need something a bit more concrete and focused, sometimes. Go ahead. Any responses to that? So what is curriculum? What are we talking about here? Yeah, I guess that's what I was um, starting to wonder, Paul, too. Um, just thinking about curriculum you know, you can think about curriculum as a set of um, uh, outcomes or objectives, right? But then you can also think of curriculum as an educative experience. Like, how do you organize an educational experience? So I guess um, I'm sort of wondering sort of how we're thinking about that. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things that in... in brainstorming some things earlier with Karen. Um, having student work as the focus of, of the curriculum seemed like an important idea. Like, so, so defining, defining curriculum by what students actually make mm -hmm. um, might be one of the things to right. do. But Monica, do you want to throw in your notion of curriculum at this point? Yeah, I have to say that um, the first time that my soul really felt well about the word curriculum was when I heard Seymour Papert in a video talking about um, finding the curriculum inside each child. And so um, I, I think a lot of the work that we've done, people say um, the reason it's not for everyone is because there's no structure and some people don't like no structure, when in fact there's structure in everything. And so um, I guess in my mind I think of curriculum as that structure, but at its optimum I think it, you know, the ability to fill, facilitate curiosity from within and let it be driven, you know, from the kid it is where it sets well with me. And I, I, would, I would add, um, this is Paul, not necessarily a definition of what curriculum is, but, but following up a little bit on what Monica was saying, I think what, in my view, what should be driving curriculum too are the, the educators who are, are really conceiving of it. Um, so involving teachers in that process and, uh, in trying to design curriculum. And uh, I, I would also add that I think Karen's question is a really great one as a starting point in terms of what is the purpose of education? Because I, I think that then really does define uh, or help us define then what we think of when we think of curriculum, uh, what we think of, you know, when we think of this educa ed educative experience as Christina mentioned. And I would just say that in, uh, in some conversations with, with people who, um, you know, are, are throwing around terms like um, college ready and work ready. 
um, as though that's the purpose of school. Um, I was talking to a uh, someone who I work with in the Oakland Public Schools here who was saying that you know, he believes the purpose of school is to help um, our youth become community ready. And, uh, and I think that's a really interesting term. What does it mean to be ready to, you know, to be an adult in the community in which um, our youth live? Yeah, I was going to say something along those lines with, um, I think, you know, for me, I have a narrow focus, I guess, but, uh, you know, it's about um, two big things is literacy slash communication and citizenship would be like two things I think we do a lot of in my situation. And that seems pretty worthwhile to me. Do you want to say more how you, how you do that? Uh, well, you know, how do we communicate best in whatever medium we're working in is something that takes up a lot of my time and my teaching and my students work. Uh, so, you know, if I'm communicating on paper with someone with pen, um, there are different kinds of things that are taking place than if I am presenting that same idea or similar idea via, let's say, a YouTube. Um, and all those things are really important for people to do. Um, and so how do I communicate, to go back to Paul's idea, you know, how do I communicate well in my communities is really, you know, it sums up a lot of what I do. And academic communities are communities too, right? I mean, oh, yeah, so, yeah. So that's, so, yeah. I, you know, can I, okay. One of the one of the thoughts I always have um, is that whatever I call curriculum is what I think I'm doing to interrupt the curriculum that they're bringing with them. So I don't. I, I think it's kind of, and by that I mean the curriculum of TV, the curriculum of Xbox, the curriculum of you know the the the, the standard culture. So I don't think I don't think any of our students are these you know wonderful natural beings. So I mean, and I'll be very specific. So, so that one of the one of the places of curriculum is is you know, learning how to be thoughtful in responding to each other on a social network. Right? Seems seems very simple, but what they bring with them isn't necessarily, um, you know, natural at all. It's it's what it's a learn it's learned in their culture, and um, and and I I I kind of think that what I think of the curriculum is is where I can interrupt some of that learning from our culture that I think isn't so positive. And so, I, I have to ask how much of that culture is created because of the curriculum that we prescribed when no one's asking for it. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I am curious, Karen. You're the one that has, you know, you learn so much when you put things like this together, and I'm just very curious what you've gleaned, you know, from this. So I'd love to hear that. Well, I really like your point that, you know, curriculum can be an individual thing. And I think, you know, it's different for different students in different situations. And I think that's really important. I think one of the, like, I definitely, in talking to a lot of people about this video, got some some pretty um, strong backlash on the whole idea of curriculum. I wish Terry Elliott was here because he's like, curriculum is horrible and just kind of all this and I'm like it doesn't have to be horrible but it doesn't have to be like a one-size-fits-all thing and a lot of a lot of people sort of that was their first we talked about what should curriculum be what should it not be I mean it shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all like and that's I think that's our our school environments now are so entrenched in that that I think the word curriculum now to people means something so specific and so like standard not not just standard standards based but an actual standardized approach where everybody's on the same page at the same time and I think that's just a tragedy because I think Paul's right there's curriculum is what's going on all the time and it's not it's it's not necessarily um, like a good or bad thing but I mean you kinda have to think about it in a in a bigger sense maybe it makes me think how um you know, if we think about it in a sort of, uh, this is sort of on the bad side, so I don't mean it as just a bad example, but, you know, if we think about the commercial commercial interests and how marketing is, is developed and then how, you know, the marketers are often creating educational experiences for 
whoever their target target audience is, right? And so that itself is a curriculum too, in a way. You know, it's like a very intentional, <laughs> experiential thing that's being developed. Um, and it does feel like there's probably, you know, many ways to think about it in less intentional ways too. But you know, I do think that it's sort of all around us. Um, and I think that's an interesting way to think about it, actually. And your videos actually point to all these sort of different examples, Karen. So, so we could go back to the video, unless somebody wanted to jump in. Shall we do that? I think that's a, a relatively good um, uh, transition to the next section here. Um, which I'll play. This will this will go for about um, about three minutes.